Hey, it's Joel. I find myself in spring break capital of the world, Austin, Texas, with another Joel. Hey. Hey, Joel. Good to see you, Joel. We are talking about copper 3D printing, and there's an EOS machine that can do this, right? That's right. Which one is it? EOS M290 one kilowatt. One kilowatt. So normally you can get that machine with a, what, 400 watt laser. And you guys can throw a one kilowatt laser in there. That's right. And produce copper, well, easily. Look at that thing. Yeah. This looks, this looks great. What is this? So this is an inductor. We use this for inductive heating. So you have a workpiece that mm -hmm. you want to heat up. And instead of contacting it, you can use the principle of induction to induce eddy currents in the material so it heats without contact. I've seen that. Like, there's a lot of auto, machine automation in factories that have to heat a, a metal piece and it goes into a thing and then it goes nice red hot. And, right. and that's the eddy currents that are being inducted. Yeah, so it's typically a coil, but what we can do with this 3D printed version is we can have a channel running through the coil that has coolant in it. And with that coolant, you can cool this part and reduce your cycle time. Okay, and yeah. you're not gonna be able to do that with another manufacturing method. You have to make that with additive because right. making those tiny little channels is not something that's really easily or at all manufacturable another way, right? Exactly. You know, this is cool because I got to print this. This is a, this is a print I did, and I, I'm, we're gonna go through the process yeah. of printing it because it was absolutely fascinating. So to print this, uh, first we had uh, Zach who, uh, here at EOS. He was wearing paper and loaded the material into the machine. Um, you gotta wear the paper. Positive air pressure. Yeah. It was the first time I've ever wore one, and it's this really weird feeling, mm -hmm. but I got used to it. The machine printed this, and it did it overnight. The powder bed fusion process is uh, printing and dropping it down into the, as it recoats it with powder. And then when it was done, uh, it, it, it was within the powder. And so it's kind of fun yeah. excavating for these right. parts. You, you have an idea where they're on the build plate and as you're going in with a shovel or a trowel, it's like you, you hit pay dirt, right? After you've done your part being Indiana Jones, digging the bones out, you can now take it over to the, the media blasting chamber, right? Yeah, but we're not using media, we're just using air? Well, you just wanna make sure that there's no powder left on the build plate. I see, so what we get out there is, is okay, but with all of these tiny little channels, that powder is really minuscule, so it can right. get into places. That, okay, so we got to put it in the, the blast chamber, and I hit it with compressed air, and that was fun. Like, when I first hit it, it went Psh. After you took it out of the blast chamber, uh, it went over to the uh, wire EDM station. Mm -hmm. And because it's still attached to the build plate and you have to get it off, like you said, you bolt it onto this machine and then electrical current and a dielectric fluid is introduced and you slowly but surely cut it off the build plate. And then it just drops? Yeah. Or you can catch it, you said, right? You can right? catch you can it, catch you can it, mount yeah. it to something, yeah. yeah. Awesome. And once it's off the build plate, it's, it's gonna look like this. It has a bunch of support material on it. And at this point, you have to remove it. And there's special ways to do it, but I used pliers. Pliers. I used pliers, and it actually pulls off of the model. Yeah. Well, you know, uh, being copper, you said it's more ductile, right? That's right. Now, is that why it was so easy to remove the supports? Yeah, especially the supports that you removed. I mean, just peeling them away. But look at this. This is like, I printed this. Mm-hmm and I post-process this. Yeah. This is the first time that I've done that with any metal. Congrats. Thanks, Joel. I Great appreciate work. you. All right, so we're talking about copper. Right. The, the M290 with that one kilowatt laser is able to print it incredibly well. Well, I know copper is good. With, like, we have copper hot ends yeah. for 3D printers exactly. because they can, they can transfer heat really well, mm -hmm. right? What else do you print with that machine? I've got okay. a few applications I want to talk about. Sure. So is this, a, is this a CPU cooler? That's right, yeah. Oh, okay. This is a gaming CPU cooler. When you're running a processor at high temps, you need to get that heat off of the processor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you want to use a heat sink. With this, you can run liquid through these channels, and that cool liquid, is it's easier for it to take that heat away from the processor makes sense. and keep you going. So then with, I, I know there's water cooling rigs, mm -hmm. and I know that they, uh, be, a copper heat sink with water cooling is great because it's thermal conductivity, exactly. right? But what does, what does the additive part add to this that a non-additive made piece might have? Optimal shape for getting that fluid flow. Oh, because additive can make those tiny channels possible, and so you're not having to take parts and bolt together. You have a, you have a manifold part. Exactly. Oh, okay. 
And really, and really effective too because it's copper. What yeah. Else you got? Well, we've got a lot more heat exchange applications. So this is a, a heat exchanger for fluid flow. This is an example of maybe you have two flick liquids, a liquid and a gas. You can get the heat transfer across. Oh, I see. I see. And again, with the channels embedded within this, additive is going to be the only way you're going to be able to do that. That's right. And it's like it's sturdy. That's pretty good. Check this one out. Hey. Okay, I recognize the gyroid infill. Yeah. But like, is this? Is, is gyroid functional for this design? Yeah, so it's actually a crucible for uh, maybe like melting gold or something like that. So you're able to get that heat in there faster, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Okay. You ready to go bigger? Well, yeah, what do you got? All right, so this. <laughs> All right, this is a rocket thruster. Yeah, yeah, and it is. A Holy lot cow. of times when we do rocket thrusters, we use a slightly different alloy of copper so that not only do we have high conductivity, but we also have high strength. Oh, I see. You can add some stuff to the copper to, to really increase its strength, right? Yeah, I guess in this case, sense. we're adding chromium and zirconium. You can add alloying elements to change the crystal structure and change the microstructure uh, oh. to improve the tensile strength. At, 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 a, at a chemical level, it is like stronger. Exactly. It's it's crazy to me. And like it's a metal 3D printed part, but it's massive. It's massive. But we can go bigger. How big? You remember the part you saw in the lobby when you walked in? Oh yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Was yeah. That, that was copper, wasn't it? That's right. Holy cow. Same alloy. The difference between that one and this one, well, one, obviously that one was a lot bigger. It's a bit bigger, yeah. Yeah, that was printed on an M4K, which is about a, a meter tall in build height. <laughs> The other cool thing about that one, all those small spirals and complicated features on the inside, that's because it was designed with AI. What? Okay, how did, how did AI uh, help design that? If you really want to maximize your cooling and create a really uh, complex geometry, instead of modeling it manually and painstakingly in CAD, you can use AI software to tell the software, hey, this is what I want. I want this kind of performance in this kind of thrust and there's specialized software out there that'll do the design for you. It's, it's conforming what it's designing to the requirements. Exactly. Well, first of all, Joel, it's been very, yeah. very wonderful. So a piece like this, copper's really cool. People are gonna wanna know more. Yeah. Actually, at Rapid Plus TCT this year, can I learn more about copper at the EOS booth? Absolutely, you can come to our booth, you can see some example machines, our materials. We can have our engineers explain more about the intricacies of printed copper, as well as other materials like titanium and aluminum. Whatever questions you have, just come by and ask. Sweet. They can also hit you up on the web, right? That's right. EOS.info. Sweet. All right. Well, thanks for watching. If you made the star, you're awesome. Don't forget to hug each other more. Fight for a cause you believe in and print all of the copper. And as always, high five. No one? Yeah. First Joel Joel high five.